A radio presenter starts off the movie by welcoming his listeners across Los Angeles into the show. He is to give a chance to his fellow presenter called Kim to give some updates on the traffic news. However, he first passes the big question to his listeners that will give the winner a free entry to the Kitty Barley concert. His question is about the dress color that Kim Kardashian was wearing at the awards party held the previous night. After he poses his question, he gives over to Kim to report on the traffic news across the city which she does, and says everything is looking all fine. We are then introduced to a car that is on Highway 101 that is heading to the airport. The name of the driver is Colin who is on the phone with his sports agent. Colin is one of the most renowned baseball players in the nation. He is so thrilled to hear that his sports agent has secured him a sponsorship and he tells him that he is the best sports agent in the world. He tells the agent that he is heading to the airport to sign the deal. There is a disconnection in communication but Collins manages to hear the sports agent telling him to tune the radio for some breaking news. He does so and the radio presenter says that they have some unconfirmed reports in downtown LA that a couple of thousands of people have vanished. He adds that the vanishings have been reported across the city. The reporter urges the people to stay where they are because very little is known about the vanishings. The news on the radio also reports that the city is in a kind of panic right now with traffic building up on various roads. The presenter says that the unimaginable has happened where hundreds if not thousands have disappeared from the earth. As Collins listens to the news, his countenance becomes dull and afraid and he loosens his safety belt and walks out of his car. On looking there are hundreds of cars on the street with panic everywhere. He seems worried and it is clear that he is aware of what has just happened across the globe. He starts walking amidst the traffic and he meets other confused drivers who are asking themselves what is going on. The lady tells him that she has heard in the news that thousands of people have disappeared and the other male driver says that is what he heard too. They start panicking and trying to call some of their friends or family members, their communication is down. They come and tell them that all four lanes are not allowed to drive and the police are only allowing emergency vehicles only. Another lady comes and tells them that it seems millions have disappeared across the world. The man is angry because of the traffic and says nobody is going anywhere. One lady says that maybe something has happened and taken the people away. His friends who are already confused ask her what she means and they tell her that they don't believe what she is saying. Collins shouts at them and tells them to stop because what has happened is worse. He tells them that the rapture happened. One lady asks what is the rapture and Collins tells her that she doesn't want to know what it is and he walks away from them amidst the traffic. We are taken to somewhere in the southern Pacific where we see a man who seems to have escaped from the ocean and is lying on the beach. He is drenched and he wakes up in amazement trying to remember where he is. His name is Professor Wiseman one of the renowned professors at the University of Southern California. He starts remembering what happened before he found himself on the beach. We see him talking to a lady on the plane asking her whether she is afraid. The lady says no and asks him why he has asked that question. The professor points the Bible to her and tells her that she has been reading it. The lady tells him that she always reads it. The professor asks her what is the point of reading it when it is written by men. The lady adds it is written by men who are inspired by God. The professor looks at her and she tells her that it is all fabrication. The professor is still on the beach coming to his senses on exactly what happened. We are now taken to Tokyo in Japan and this is Masashi one of the renowned journalists with one of the media houses in Japan. He seems so much stressed with whatever is happening across the globe and he goes to a pub to relieve his nerves. While walking on the streets, he hears that a jetliner that was carrying a renowned actor called Billy Van Effie has crashed somewhere in the Southern Pacific. The news says that the actor is one of the millions that have disappeared. With the confusion everywhere, Masashi decides to go home and sleep. The following day, he is awakened by the news of more turmoil happening across the globe. He is still lying on his bed and he hears that the Japanese Nikkei has crashed again while the world is in a state of panic. The news also has it that in London riots are taking up a high notch with rioters meeting at the Trafalgar Square. On the other hand, 
police curfews have been imposed in Europe and in the United States. Meanwhile, no one knows where the millions of people have vanished. Masashi wakes up and walks to the tap to wash his face. He looks at himself in a mirror and it is obvious he looks nervous and determined to uncover something. He heads to his laptop and on typing about the rapture, there are various articles on Google and Wikipedia about that. He scrolls and reads through and he seems to be worried and confused. He goes to the library and looks for a Bible on the shelves. After taking it, he flips through some pages and it seems he is looking out for something. He takes the Bible and other books and goes to sit down to study what is happening. He begins with the New Testament Bible and opens to the book of Mark and starts reading. He stays in the library until evening and he walks home. He seems afraid and he keeps looking at his back as if there is someone monitoring him. Immediately, some rogue boys on their skating board approach him and surround him. They tell him that they need money and he takes out a wallet that is empty and tells them that he doesn't have money. One of the boys pulls out a gun at him and points it on his head. Masashi tells him that he has an iPhone and when he tries to give it, one of the guys tells him that the iPhone has a poor reception. He tells them that he has nothing and he removes the Bible from his bag and tells them that he has a Bible and tells them to take it. On seeing the Bible, they say no and they take their skating boards and leave him. Masashi watches them as they skate away from him. In another part of the world, Buenos Aires, we see this lady walking in the streets and she seems confused and tired. Maybe she has been walking the whole day. I don't think she even knows her name. Anyway, her name is Maria. She seems so lost and not in the right state of mind. She starts asking random people where he can get some food. One guy deceives her that he is a policeman and he asks her how he can be of help. The lady tells him that she is just looking for some food but the man starts mishandling her and telling her that he is going to protect her and she should stay with him. He becomes forceful and holds Maria at a close range and she asks him what he is doing. The guy tries to molest her while Maria cries out for help. Your guess is as good as mine, no one cares or comes to help her because everyone cares about their own security. Maria fights him with the little strength she is left with and he lets her go. However, he follows her closely. Maria keeps on asking for help but no one even cares to know what is happening to her. She finally gets an open shop and she gets in and asks for help and tells them that someone is following her. The man follows him in and says that he is a policeman and tells the shop attendant not to be involved. The guy tells Maria that he is waiting for her outside. All roads to Recoleta are blocked and a patrol of armed soldiers and police are patrolling the road that is decorated with stones and other debris. The news also has it that there are uncontrollable fires everywhere while several bombs have exploded in Palermo. Maria finally gets some freedom from the guy who was stalking her and she is walking in the city. She sits down and finds a radio which she turns on to hear what is happening. The reporter says that the world is in a state of panic while millions of people have disappeared. There are also thousands of accidents everywhere as people vanish. It is also reported that the soccer league has suspended all games. Maria walks into the tenth city where police and ambulance sirens are all over. She finds a guy in the street and she asks him to tell her where she is. The guy asks her why she cares but eventually tells her that she is in Buenos Aires. Maria asks him whether he can explain to her what is happening there and why everyone is going insane. The guy tells her that it is the end of the world. He tells her that it is the end and he is surprised that she doesn't have any clue that the end has come. She is so surprised and the guy walks away from her. She continues walking in the streets and she watches a wall screen showing chaos in the town while police water cannon is trying to control the situation and the protesting crowd. She sits down and removes her shoes. Inside one of the shoes, she sees some money that she had kept there which she quickly puts in her pocket. She also finds her passport and an ID. This is when she remembers her name after reading it on the passport. She returns the ID and passport in the shoe and wears them back. We are in LA again and we are following the happenings in the life of Collins, a famous baseball player in the nation who has been left behind. 
he is walking in the street while thinking about his life. He remembers five days ago when he was hanging out with his friends in Venice Beach. They are asking him how much he was paid for the contract. He tells them that it wasn't much, it was about five million dollars. They all laugh together and ask him what he is going to do with all that money. He tells them that he has not figured it out yet but perhaps he will get another apartment and buy some new cars. That stresses him and he continues walking down the street and walks in one of the shops. He is obviously hungry and is looking for something to eat. The shelves are literally empty but he is lucky to find the only bread on the shelf. The price list of the bread is reading $109 which is obviously an inflated price because of the global crises. The owner of the shop notices him and he immediately takes the gun, points to him, and tells him that he is going to kill him if he thinks he can steal from him. Collins tells him to hold on and asks him what he is doing. The shopkeeper asks him whether he has seen the sign on the door saying the shop is closed. He also asks him how he got into the shop. Collins tells him that he found the door open and he got in and he never read the sign. The guy tells him to put the bread on the counter and to back away. He seems angry and he is yelling all over while holding a gun at him. Collins does as he is commanded and he lifts up his head and tells him that he doesn't know who he is. He tells the shopkeeper that he plays for one of the clubs in the USA but the guy tells him that he doesn't watch baseball. Finally, the guy releases the bread to Collins which he eats as he walks down the road. This is Collins and his wife, Michelle, in Santa Monica Beach exactly three weeks before the rapture happened. Collins is reading the book of Revelation where the angels will blow the trumpets and various disasters will occur on earth. After reading it, he asks his wife why she is reading such stuff. Collins asks his wife why a loving God would do such a thing to the inhabitants of the earth. His wife tells him that God is a loving God and also a God of judgment. She adds that he cannot allow evil to persist because he will bring it to an end and bring a resolution. Michelle tells her husband that when Jesus comes and takes the saints up, then it will be the end. She tells him that he should not allow himself to be deceived. However, Collins says that he will take his chance. He is remembering all this and he is sweating all over. He looks confused and afraid at the same time. We are now taken to Professor Wiseman in the Pacific Ocean who is going through the various bags of the passengers from the crashed plane. He comes across the bag of Collins' wife, who happens to be on the same plane with him. He reads the name tag and he says that Michelle is pathetic and he has a flashback of his interaction with Michelle in the University of Southern California. In his flashback, we are taken to four months before the rapture. Michelle is calling on Professor Wiseman about the thesis she is supposed to do. She tells the professor that she cannot do the thesis about philosophy he told her to do and she has to drop the class. The professor is disappointed because Michelle is one of the top students in philosophy. He also asks her what has come over her that she has decided to drop the philosophy thesis. Michelle tells him that she has had an encounter and she is now a believer. Professor clears his throat and asks her what her football star husband is saying about her transformation. Michelle tells him that he is not so happy about it and Professor Wiseman laughs sarcastically while saying that he could have imagined. The professor asks her whether she can prove that God exists and Michelle gladly says yes she can. On hearing that, the professor tells her that the topic will be her thesis. Michelle thanks her and leaves with joy. Professor was remembering all that and he finally opened Michelle's bag hoping that she had something good for him. He finds a radio and he is quite happy about it. He tries to put it on but it seems that the battery is low. On looking again at Michelle's suitcase, he sees a Bible and he can't believe that he found this book that talks about a God that he doesn't even believe that he exists. He throws it away and starts walking on the beach. He starts walking and writing down the date and exactly where he is. He says that it is May 19th and he is stranded on an island somewhere in the southern Pacific. He writes and says that the plane went down suddenly and he is the only survivor. He then stops writing and starts asking himself exactly what happened to the woman who was sitting next to him. We are given a flashback of the professor in the plane exactly two minutes before the rapture. 
The professor was asking the woman sitting next to him whether she is afraid. The woman says she is not and asks him why he is saying so. The professor shows him the Bible and she must be afraid to be reading the Bible. The professor keeps on remembering and says that it doesn't make any sense. Again, we are taken back into the plane where the woman asks the professor whether he believes that Julius Caesar existed. He says of course he believes. Immediately, the pilot gives a warning that every passenger should buckle up their safety belts because they are likely to experience turbulences due to an approaching storm. The woman asks the professor whether he thinks everything is okay and he says he doesn't know. Immediately, there is an alarm in the plane while the turbulences increase making the plane quite unstable and shaky. The flight attendant is also confused and she doesn't know exactly what is happening. She promises to go and ask the pilot what is happening while she urges everyone to be in their seats with their safety belts on. She then asks where the neighbor of the professor has gone. That comes as a shock to the professor to see an empty seat and the woman he was speaking with missing. The professor says that he doesn't have any idea where the woman disappeared because she was sitting next to him. The plane starts descending and every passenger is afraid including the professor who starts screaming saying that this cannot be happening. We then see the plane coming on high speed near the ocean and the next the next thing we see is the plane exploding into flames and the professor coming out of the water gasping for breath. This is Maria and is in Palermo. She is still roaming in the city streets trying to locate her house. She finally reaches in front of a building which she thinks is her home and she starts pressing the doorbell. Fortunately, the mother of her friend, who lives in the same building comes by and she is so surprised to see her in her unfortunate state. She asks her what she is doing there and what happened to her. She says that she doesn't know. The woman tells her that her friend Anna disappeared but her friend Adrian is still in the house. Maria tells her that she forgot her keys and she requests her to let her in which she agrees. Maria seems to be in a hurry and she tells the woman to hurry up. On getting in, the woman tells her that it is that crazy rapture thing that has happened. She asks Maria whether she has heard of it. She continues and says that she believes in Jesus Christ but she doesn't understand why she was left behind. She hopes Maria understands what she is saying because she is not saying anything. She opens the door and tells her to sit on a couch. Maria seems confused especially when she starts looking around. She finally sets her eyes on Adrian who looks nervous and sicky. She asks the woman what happened to her, and the woman says that she has been like that since October 18th. Maria asks the woman whether she has a way of contacting her family and she says she has no way. Maria insists and says that there must be someone to talk to and the woman tells her that there is no one. The woman seems concerned and she asks her once again what happened to her because she doesn't look well. Maria tells her that she was in an accident and she lost her memory. The woman recommends that they better watch the news while she answers an incoming call on her phone. She tells Maria that she should be careful because the whole world is going crazy. She goes into the room to answer her call. Maria goes to where Adrian is sitting and she tries to talk to her while waving before her eyes to see whether she is seeing or understanding anything. She then takes a piece of cake from her head and starts eating while looking at her. She has a flashback of the company of friends she was having before the rapture happened. We see her with her boyfriend, Anna, and Adrian. Adrian is asking Anna what is her problem because she has eyes but doesn't see. She tells her that he won't know and he won't get hurt referring to cheating on her boyfriend. Anna, who is a born-again Christian, tells her that she doesn't care what she is doing or saying, she is just speaking from a moral point of view. Maria asks her what is up with her and she asks her what is the right way, her views, or morals. She adds that it is not about morals and she continues sipping her drink. Anna tries to talk to her saying that she believes in morals but Maria is not interested in her narratives and Anna asks her whether she is listening to her. Meanwhile, Maria turns to her boyfriend and gives him a sip of the drink. Anna continues and says that we are all going to pay for what we have done. They ask her what she's saying and they laugh at her sarcastically while asking her what has come over her. Adrian says to her that God is a lie which makes Anna hold her head in disappointment. 
Maria also says that she doesn't believe in God either and she kisses her boyfriend perhaps to make Maria feel terrible. Her boyfriend adds and says that only losers believe in God and they all laugh mockingly at Anna. Maria is still in Adrian's house remembering all that she was saying to Anna. She later goes to the mirror and looks at herself in disbelief. She finds the photo of Anna and she gazes at it and she remembers what the girl was telling them before the rapture. She has a flashback of Anna telling them that as she is drawing closer to God, she is finding true contentment. Anna asks Adrian and Maria what is holding them back from believing but they just stare at her. We are then taken to two minutes before the rapture where Maria is on the train sitting next to a woman. We are shown different passengers on the train discussing while others making unnecessary noise. Maria is seated in her seat looking outside. She then looks at the seat and doesn't see the lady and she shouts asking everyone where is the lady. She stands and starts asking where is the lady. The other passengers look at her in amazement because they don't know what she is talking about. However, another young man is also asking where his friend has gone. Maria remembers all that and she starts to cry. We are now in Ritz-Carlton in Tokyo where we see Masashi is having a meeting with his fellow journalist. The guy tells Masashi that he is making a lot of enemies by trying to tell the members of the public that what has happened was foretold by the Bible. Masashi tells him that millions of people have disappeared and nobody knows where they are. The man tells him that he is spreading the rapture theory all over Japan and he should stop being stupid. Masashi asks him what he means by that but the man tells him that the experts believe that the aliens took them and he says he believes them. Of course, that doesn't sit well with Masashi who knows the truth. He asks him whether he is really sure of what he is saying and he says yes. Masashi tells him that as journalists they are to seek truth. However, that does not sit so well with his colleague who asks him why he is so obsessed with the rapture theory. He tells Masashi that their newspaper office is getting a ton of complaints because of his rapture theories. Masashi is shocked to hear that and he asks who is complaining to their newspaper. The man says that everybody is complaining because they think Masashi is crazy. That makes Masashi feel disheartened and he says that only truth will save people. He quotes what his colleague had told him earlier. Masashi tries to remind him what he had said concerning telling the people the truth but the man looks adamant and not interested in what Masashi is saying. He tells Masashi that he remembers and he knows that he said so but that does not matter anymore. Masashi gets the Bible from his bag places it on the table and tells his colleague that according to the Bible, terrible times are about hitting the earth as it is written in the book of Revelation. The man takes the Bible and looks at it and asks Masashi where he got that old book. Masashi tells him that he had a friend who told him about Jesus the Son of God. He goes on and says that the lady was very devout and always carried the Bible and she also vanished with the rest of the people. The man tells him that Jesus Christ is a fairy tale. Masashi asks him if Jesus Christ is a fairy tale, then why is the government so desperate to shut it out? In the next scene, we see Masashi walking into a building and he notices a man who seems to be stalking him. He goes and meets with Keiko whom he confides and tells her that she is dying. Keiko is surprised to hear that and asks her why the chemo is not working. As he is talking, he experiences some pain in his stomach but braces himself. He asks Keiko whether she can remember Arch McCullum the missionary. Keiko says yes and asks him why he wants him. Masashi requests to know where he is. She can't tell where the missionary is because it has been a long time neither can she remember the organization he was working with. However, she tells Masashi that the place was near Sabuya Station. Masashi tells Keiko that he thinks that the whole alien theory that is being spread across Japan and the world is not right. The lady asks him what he means and Masashi tells him that he thinks that the rapture theory is true. Keiko tells him to be very careful because the government has banned such discussions. Masashi insists that the rapture theory must be true. In the next scene, we see Masashi on a train and he notices the same man he had seen before who seems to be stalking him. He goes to Sabuya Station to look for the presence of the Campus Crusade for Christ offices. On arriving there, he meets a guard who is arrogant, 
and when he asks him the guy tells him that it is none of his business. Is the government hiding something here? On asking whether the Campus Crusade for Christ is located there, the man tells him that as he can see, it is empty and there is nothing like that. Masashi insists that he believes that the Campus Crusade for Christ offices are located there but the man tells him that there is no one there. As Masashi tries to get in, the man starts taking his gun which makes Masashi back off and run away. As he is walking in the street, he meets a lady who is working at the Campus Crusade for Christ and he tells her to tell him the truth. The lady tells him that after many people vanished, she got a weird phone call from a government agency that ordered her not to discuss anything with anyone about the disappearance of the Campus Crusade staff. Masashi asks why and the lady says that she told them that she will not discuss it with anyone. Masashi asks her what happened next and she tells him that she was followed by two men. Masashi asks her what happened to the staff and she says that they all vanished, every single one of them has been missing. She asks Masashi whether he thinks it is the rapture. On looking around, Masashi sees a lady who has been watching them and he tells the lady that they should get out of there immediately and they get away. It is day two after the rapture in California. The sound of helicopters that are flying low can be heard. We are introduced to a group dressed in military uniform that has been ordered to recruit young men into the military. This time, they arrive at Collins' compound who is about to leave the house. Their leader tells Collins that they are looking and conducting a survey of young men between the ages of 18 to 25 years. Collins asks them for what and he is given a letter and told to report with the letter at a certain location the following morning for military recruitment. He asks them if they are sure they got the right guy and he is told that it is an order from the Congress and he will find out more when he gets to the camp the following morning. On insisting, a gun is pointed at him, and is told to stop asking questions and show the sergeant some respect. Collins shouts and tells them that he is not going anywhere. He is ordered to be on his knees and when he tries to resist he is knocked to his knees and one of the men tells him that by the following day, he should be ready to join the military. With that, they leave Collins on his knees. We then see Collins at Lax Airport. As he is walking, he remembers his last moments with his wife on Santa Monica Beach three weeks before the rapture where he was telling her that she needed to go back to her normal self. As they are walking together Collins asks her what happened to her and the lady starts narrating how she encountered Jesus. She asks Collins about the possibility of the things on our planet and tells him that they only exist because God exists. He asks Collins whether he has ever thought of such things and he says no. We are back at the airport where Collins is still heading to his station to check in. He goes to a lady and tells her that he wants to leave the city though his credit card is not working but he has some cash to pay for the air ticket. The lady tells him that all the flight tickets are completely sold out. He asks her what about destinations like Mexico, Tokyo, and such. The lady tells him that the last flight tickets were sold out nine hours ago and she is just packing her stuff to leave the airport because they are shutting down LA by the following day. She asks Collins whether he watches the news and he just has to leave the airport. We are taken to Ginza in Japan where Masashi is still walking through the streets. He then sees the man who has been stalking him and senses that something is not right. He starts remembering the discussion they were having previously with the professor on why the government doesn't want people to know about the rapture. The professor says that it is because they don't want to create panic. He tells them to imagine if everyone knew they had seven years left to live after the rapture a period characterized by horrible plagues, wars, and famine. It would definitely result in chaos. Masashi asks him if it is better to lie to the people and he tells him that he is leaving Japan. Masashi insists and asks him whether he believes that it is the rapture and he says yes. Masashi asks how is God fair by doing that although he didn't know about Jesus Christ. The professor tells him that he now knows about Jesus and he takes their attention to a fashion display which he calls useless. He continues and says that no one is buying anything anymore. The professor asks Masashi if he has told him that he has one week to live and he advises him to take a rest, read the Bible again, and make peace with the Son of God. 
Masashi is holding the Bible and shaking and tells the professor that he remembers that a woman once told him about Jesus Christ and even went to church with her. But when the altar call came, he did not go forward and he says he now knows why he couldn't go forward. Professor asks him why and Masashi says because he didn't want to change, not for God, not for anyone even Jesus Christ. Professor tells him that time is running out and Masashi tells him that he has to finish the article where he was to expose the truth. Professor tells him that time is running out because the government is taking over all the newspapers by Friday and he only has two days to get the word out. That's a surprise to Masashi. In the next scene, we see the lady who was working at the campus crusade entering the elevator and before it closes, the man who has been stalking Masashi enters the elevator. We then see him removing some gloves from his hands signifying that he has been killed by suffocating the lady who is lying in the elevator lifeless. Masashi has been looking for the lady for a few days and he has gone to her apartment to check her out since he has been missing. He continues knocking but no one opens. Her name is Rika and despite Masashi calling her name out and knocking on the door, the call remains unanswered. He goes to the hotel staff and he accompanies him to Rika's house. Masashi tells him that he is dating Rika in London. The hotel staff tells him that he didn't know that Rika had a boyfriend. He opens the door for him and they enter into Rika's apartment. The hotel staff tells Masashi that he thought Rika was a virgin because she was very religious. They further go inside and the man says that he hasn't seen her since the big vanishing. He tells him to enjoy and he leaves. Masashi took the remote and reduced the volume of the TV which was quite high. He goes to the window and has a view of the city. He then flips through the Bible that was open indicating that Rika was reading it before she disappeared. Immediately, there is news of the world heads of states meeting in Norway to discuss the disappearances. The reporter says that one of the conclusions that has been resolved is about the biblical rapture theory that many people espoused at first. On hearing that, Masashi switches off the TV. He hears some water running in the kitchen and goes to switch it off and notices that someone is preparing the coffee there. The man who has been stalking him and killed Rika is right there in the house and he starts struggling with Masashi. When he is about to end his life, the hotel staff comes in and he is quite amazed to see what is happening. The assassin leaves Masashi and goes to the hotel staff and struggles him to death while Masashi takes his bag and runs away. He hides in one of the rooms outside and the guy comes looking for him. The guy is harmed with a gun ready to end Masashi's life. He starts opening dustbins to check for him. Fortunately for Masashi, he was hiding in another dustbin which the assassin never opened. On leaving, Masashi gets out and runs out of the hotel and the guy spots him and starts running after him even in the streets. Masashi runs and enters a supermarket and the guy keeps stalking him. Masashi devises a plan and runs away using the back door unnoticed by the assassin. In the next scene, we are taken back to Pacific Ocean Beach where Professor Wiseman is still stranded. As he is walking, he notices a lady who has been washed by water to the shores. On checking her up, he realizes that she is dead. He takes her purse and on checking inside, he finds a recording where the lady is saying that she is in the middle of nowhere after her plane crashes and is asking God to help her. Professor mocks her and tells her that's where her prayers got her into and he places her purse on her as the waves come to where she is lying. Back in the university, Professor Wiseman is remembering a lecture he had four months before the rapture. He was asking the students whether it was irrational for them to believe in God and he says that he believed it was irrational. He calls Mary, one of the students to tell him why she is disagreeing with him. Mary tells him that he believes in God and another guy says the same thing. The professor calls their answers stupid declarative sentences. He tells them that they should not give him a declarative sentence unless they can prove it. He goes to Michelle, the wife of Collins, and tells her to continue on why she still believes in God. Michelle says because she has faith it is the only way one can believe there is God and he answers her prayers. On hearing that, the professor ridicules her for getting answers to her prayers. He asks one of the students called Bill and says that it sounds so stupid and some students who don't believe in God laugh at it. 
The professor tells him that it is not stupid because some people can believe in prayers even if they are wrong. He then tells Michelle to continue. She continues and says that she remembers one day she was standing at the ocean and she said Lord, speak for your servant is listening. Immediately, there was a loud thunder and the sky turned all red and that was an authenticating experience. Of course, the professor looks at her with disbelief and in a sarcastic way. Michelle says that if they base the existence of God on that criteria alone, it is proof that God exists. The professor shakes his head and asks her why is she the only one who has heard that experience. At the island, the professor continues to climb to higher grounds to try and see whether he can get a signal for his radio. He keeps trying but nothing works and he calls it a piece of junk. He has given up and he shouts that this cannot be happening. He remembers a discussion he had with Michelle three weeks before the rapture. Michelle is telling him that if she doesn't do the thesis she will not graduate and the professor tells her that it is none of his problem. He tells her that she has all the money from his rich husband. Michelle tells him that Collins wants a divorce and that startles the professor. He tells her that they should share the wealth and she gets half of it but Michelle says that he will let him keep all the wealth. Back to the present, the professor is still thinking about what Michelle said. We are then taken to the news where the streets are on fire and the world food shortage continues while millions in Buenos Aires have taken to the streets. This is Maria going to buy a loaf of bread and the shopkeeper tells her that it is selling for 200 pesos. She tells him that she is having 45 pesos but the shopkeeper remains adamant and says the bread is worth 200 pesos. He tells her that the world is ending and he orders her out. She tells him that she wants a piece and the seller says no and he tells her to get out. She leaves reluctantly to the chaotic street. More police are arriving at the scene in the city to try and regulate the chaos but that seems not to be helping. Maria is heading home and she notices a guy that has been trailing her and she hides. She remembers the encounter she has had with him where he was shouting at her telling her not to play dumb with him. The guy asks her what is going on with her and she tells him that she lost her memory. But the guy doesn't believe her. He asks her whether she is being serious and she doesn't know who he is. Maria starts calling out for help and the guy tells him to shut up and stop playing dumb with him. Maria tells him to let her go but the guy says that he will not let her go for nothing. Back to the present. Maria is still hiding and looking at the guy who has been waiting for her to come back. In the next scene, we see Maria looking for something desperately in the drawers. Finally, she gets one of the drawers out and she finds the money she had placed under it. The news has it that the situation across the globe is deteriorating with millions of people on the streets. The anti-riot police are trying to contain the situation but the rioters are busy throwing stones at them. One of the reasons that is making people take to the streets is the question of where their missing relatives and friends have disappeared. In California, the situation is no better. The rioters have lit bonfires and Collins is held in the midst of the situation. He is on the phone and he is saying that he wants to get out of the country at all costs. He says that a ticket to anywhere can do. However, he is told that they are all sold out. Collins is walking back home and the news has it that a curfew has been imposed to regulate demonstrations and no one is allowed to go out of their house after 5 p.m. Immediately, Collins is head by neck by a rogue who asks him what he is doing outside in the midst of curfew. He points a gun at him but the men dressed in military uniform arrive on time and save him. They mock him and tell him that no one is living in the country because they have shut down all the airports. He tries to run from them but they run after him and lay hold of him. He asks them who they are and they tell him that they are military contractors who are keeping law and order. Obviously, they are rogues who are exploiting people and taking their resources. He tells them that the rapture has happened but they laugh sarcastically at him. He tries to reason with them and tells them that all the people have vanished because they believed. They sarcastically tell him that they also believe and some even say that they are believers. Their leader asks him for his bank account number. Even when Collins says that the banks are not working, the leader tells him that he doesn't care and he should give him the account number. 
They check the account and they find that Collins has $3 million in his account and all the rogues shout in joy. The leader tells him that he should transfer the amount to his account and he will let him go. Collins tells them that the money is not going to matter anymore but they insist on transferring the money, he takes the phone and starts the transfer. Their leader tells them that they have made the first $3 million and they celebrate while mocking Collins. Collins looks at them while they board their vehicle and go celebrating. He remembers the discussion they were having with Michelle who was telling him that he did not marry him because of his money. This is after Collins tells her that she is now a millionaire and she should be able to live life without him because he is planning for a divorce. Collins tells her that he cannot be with a religious zealot in the same house because he did not marry one and he never signed for that. Michelle tells him that she just loves Jesus and she cannot change. He leaves her alone and goes his way. He remembers all that in sadness while he is stranded in the street. In the next scene, Collins' neighbor is at his door and she seems quite tensed and is requesting whether she can come in but Collins tells her that he is a bit busy. On insisting, Collins allows her in and tells her to call 911 and the lady says that there is no 911 anymore. We are taken back to Japan where Masashi is standing by a building and seems to be in much pain and he collapses. However, his friend Keiko comes on time rescues him, and takes him to a safe place. While in the cab, Masashi tells Keiko that there is something wrong but Keiko tells him to let it go. She asks him why he is running around investigating this whole story of rapture. She tells him that people vanished but it is not the end of the world. Masashi asks her how she knows that and tells her that it might just be the end of the world. Keiko says that the rapture theory was ruled out by the authorities and Masashi asks her who are these authorities. He starts coughing and his situation seems to be deteriorating. They continue driving and he tells Keiko that before he dies he must find the answer. Keiko is pissed off and requests the driver to drop her off. Masashi asks her where she is going but she just tells Masashi to be careful. We are taken back to California where Collins is reading the Bible to his neighbor. He reads the Bible and says that there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves and the lady shouts and says that she doesn't love herself. Collins continues and says they will be lovers of money and the lady says that she doesn't have money. Collins reads the next statement in the Bible and says that people will be boastful and the lady asks him whether she seems boastful yet she is just eating a loaf of bread. Collins doesn't listen to her and continues and read people will be proud and abusive and the lady says that she is not abusive it is her ex-husband who was abusive but she loved him. Collins continues to read and says people will be disobedient to parents and the lady says that he used to call her disobedient. Collins continues reading that people will be ungrateful and unholy and the lady says that she is grateful to her parents and she is holy because she prayers. Collins continues and reads unforgiving and without love. As expected the lady yells and says that she is full of love and she is forgiving that she even forgave her ex-husband. Collins reads with more energy and says people will be slanderous and without self-control and she says that she has not eaten the whole loaf hence she has self-control. He continues and says people will be brutal and not lovers of good and the lady says that she loves everything that is good. Collins reads that people will be treacherous and the lady says that she is very relaxed. He finally reads that people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. With that, Collins looks at the lady and she is startled and doesn't know what to say. With sadness, Collins looks at the Bible and says that they all thought they were Christians. In the next scene, we are taken to the lecture hall for months before the rapture where Professor Wiseman is writing the topic of discussion on the board which is God is dead. He then turns to the class and says that they should prove to him that God exists. One lady called Susan says that proof that God exists is a belief, not science. The professor laughs sarcastically and asks what is her name. He tells her that she doesn't come there with a washed-out answer like that ever in her life. Michelle looks at the professor and says that she doesn't believe that it is a washed-out answer because it is true. Michelle continues and says that we can prove the existence of God by the impossibility of the contrary. She continues and says that the transcending truth that God exists is based on the impossibility that without Him, nothing can be proven. 
The professor asks, what if he asks the gentleman in the back low to show that he can fly by flapping his arms? He says that will be a very unusual request and it will be left for him and the man to demonstrate that he can fly. But if he cannot demonstrate it, we can't believe that he can fly. Michelle says that she believes that the guy can fly and whether he doesn't or does demonstrate that he can fly, does not disapprove of that belief. She says that her belief in God is not based on some magic tricks. Professor terms her as a very eloquent spoken answer for a cheerleader. Professor calls another student called John and asks him to prove to him that God exists and he outright says that he can't prove I. He then calls Simon and tells him to prove that God exists. Simon says that he has faith that God exists and the professor interrupts him and says that he didn't say faith he asked for proof. Simon thinks and tells him to look around, at the planets, trees, stars and the professor once again interrupts him and asks him whether that's his proof that God exists. He tells the young man that he has just proven his ignorance. The young man feels humiliated and looks around. Professor Wiseman is still at the Pacific beach and he is taking a look at the Bible he gets angry and throws it into the ocean. As he starts walking from the ocean, he realizes that the water waves have pushed the Bible back to the shores. He feels irritated and looks at the sky in fury. We are taken back to California where we see Collins still walking in the streets. He meets a man who seems to be hopeless sitting on the street and he asks him about someone who can help him get out of the town. The man laughs at him sarcastically and asks him why he wants to leave the place. Collins leaves but the man tells him that he knows that he is trying to escape the seven seals judgments that are about to happen. Collins asks him how comes he knows and the man tells him that he can tell by the pathetic look on his face. Collins walks away again and the man tells him that it will be hard to escape the United States and tells him that he should have repented earlier because it is time to face the consequences. He tells him that he is going to die there alone. The man continues and says that he cannot wait to see a large stone falling from the sky and smashing the earth with a bang and he laughs loudly. That catches the attention of Collins and he bends down and tells him to wake. The man asks him whether he knows anything about prophecies. He tells Collins that Daniel 7 says Behold the fourth beast, terrible, dreadful, and strong exceedingly with great iron teeth. He then tells him that they were too busy listening and watching the news, Democrats and Republicans, and not paying attention to what Jesus said, Wake up for your redemption is near. On saying that, he gets sad and Collins asks him who he is. He shakes his head and asks Collins whether he recognizes him and he says no. He tells him that he was preaching before the rapture and that startles Collins and he starts walking away in haste. The man tells him that he cannot escape as he walks away in haste. Professor Wiseman is still wandering at the Pacific Island looking at the mountains and all that is surrounding him. He starts remembering asking Simon to prove to him that God exists and the student was telling him to look around, the planet, the trees, the stars. He remembers what he told him that he had just proven his ignorance. He continues remembering Michelle's answer as he looks around. Michelle was telling him that faith is the only way to prove that God exists and the answer she gets in her prayers. Professor tries his radio once more and it is working he hears news that the world is still in panic and the leaders have gathered to discuss the matter. The news has it that the financial experts have been overwhelmed by the situation at hand and the professor starts yelling asking himself what about his savings, his diamonds, and riches. He becomes sad and says that his money is gone. We are on day three after the rapture and the situation remains chaotic and worse. Maria is carrying a Bible walk-in in the streets and two thugs are following her. They call her out and tell her to give them what she has in her pockets. She tells them that she has the Bible and they take it and throw it away. Maria gets pissed off and takes out a gun and order them to go away before she shoots them. She screams that she will kill them right away and they run for their life. She picks up her Bible and continue walking. She remembers the conversation she was having with her mom a few months before the rapture. The mother was telling her that one day all the food would run out. Of course, for her, she doesn't think that something like that will ever happen and she asks her mom what she means by that statement.
Her mom continues and tells her that when the rapture happens there will be immediate famine. That catches her attention and she wants to know more about what will happen next. Her mother holds her shoulder and asks her what is she going to do when the time comes. Maria says that she doesn't know but she will take care of herself just as she has always done. She tells her mom that she should not worry herself about those rapture things. As a caring mother, she goes ahead and asks her how she knows that it is Christmas. Maria says she knows that it is Christmas because of the date and a bunch of other things. She asks her mom why she asked that. Her mother asks her a question that we should all ask ourselves. Maria's mother asks her, how can you not see what is happening? The signs of the times of the things that are happening around us. By the way, you can check our video on signs of the end time and the rise of the Antichrist. Perhaps, the Israel-Palestine war should wake you up and know that we are almost coming to the end of times. Back to the movie. Maria's mother tells her that she is just like her cousin Beatrice who doesn't want to know anything about God. Maria remembers all that while walking on the streets alone carrying her Bible and a gun. A police car approaches behind her and the policeman gets his gun ready. He comes out of the vehicle and points a gun at her and tells her to stand still. The officer tells her to drop the gun and Maria tries to tell him that she just got robbed and that's why she has a gun in her head. The officer continues to insist that she should drop the gun which she does. The officer goes further to tell her to go against the wall and she is telling the officer that she has the Bible. She cries and says that she is doing nothing and it is those guys who were trying to rob her. But it is clear the officer is not ready to listen to her. He tells her to stay still but she tries to reach out to her Bible that is on the ground. The officer asks her what she is doing and she yells to him that it is her Bible and he should give it to her which he does. The girl tries to escape from the officer while telling him to let her go but the officer starts mishandling her. She tries to cry out for help but no one is there to help her. The officer literally pushes her to the police van even after telling him that she has not done anything wrong and the vehicle drives off. Professor Wiseman is trying to look for a signal from his phone and he pleads that someone should pick up his call as he starts to dial while listening. He can't believe his ears when a lady picks up the call and asks him how he can help him. He starts asking whether she can hear him to which the lady says yes. He starts speaking loudly saying that he is Tom Wiseman stranded on an island. However, he is too loud and the receiver tells him to lower his voice. He says that he is the only survivor of Flight 345 of Oakland, New Zealand. He asks the lady to send him a rescue team to him immediately. The lady asks him whether he knows how many planes went down and she tells him that they were too many to count. The professor on hearing that becomes calm and sober and asks the lady whether that means all the pilots disappeared. She adds and tells him that millions have disappeared. She tells him that he should consider himself lucky that he is on an island but the professor tries to ask her what she is trying to say. She continues and says that it will take probably days or weeks before they think of coming to search for him because there are no more rescue teams. Professor gets pissed off and she calls her an idiot and she is told that he has just committed a crime under the laws of the New World Order government. Professor continues to ask how he has committed a crime and he is told to call the lady an idiot and the lady tells him that she is going to report him to the police. He tells the lady that she should do it fast for the police to come and arrest him on that island. He continues yelling and calling her idiot and the lady hangs up the call. We are taken back to Japan where Masashi is being informed of the new development in the new act where Japan has surrendered its national sovereignty to the WIPC. Masashi cannot believe it and he tells the man that it is impossible. The man tells him that things are progressing so rapidly. Masashi poses and holds his stomach which seems to be in pain and he says that it is kind of ironic because everyone is dying. The professor tells him that he got a new drug for cancer but Masashi tells him that the disease has already spread and it is too late for medical treatment. The man tells him that he will be praying for him. Masashi asks him when he is going to leave Japan and he says that night. He tells Masashi that he may never see him again. Masashi tells him that he will not see him on the earth but in heaven he will see him. He nods in agreement and tells Masashi to see you in heaven. 
Chaos continues to ensue in the city while some rowdy youths are shouting and shooting while matching on the streets. Maria has been dumped by the police car near there and she picks up her Bible and tries to escape. The youths shoot at the police while the police shoot at them and there are multiple casualties on the street. Maria seizes the opportunity and runs to a cab only to find that the driver has been shot and is dead. She pulls him out and drives off in the midst of chaos. She drives to the river and she is asking the way to the river. The man points in the direction of the river and tells her that he is the only survivor after everyone else disappeared. Maria asks whether there is some food left and the man tells her that he ate the last food the previous day. She asks even for a small piece and the man tells him that there is none because everything is gone. Maria insists and asks him again whether he has anything left and he tells her nothing is left and she walks away. The man looks at her compassionately but he has nothing to do. We are back in California where our man Collins is walking in the street and he meets his friend called Frank. But this time round, Frank does not want stories because he is planning on leaving the country too. All he wants is the money back that he had given Collins. We know that all the money in Collins' account had been taken by goons but he tells Frank that he will get him his money once he gains access to his bank account. Frank starts lecturing Collins and asks him how blind he could be for not realizing before that the world was coming to an end. He tells him that the government and people pulled down the thou shall not commandments that were written on the walls of the street because they never wanted to hurt anybody but now they rather have that on the walls than the millions of deaths. Even the doors that never allowed a Bible to come through, are now open to them. He sarcastically asks Collins, now that they are left behind, what are they supposed to do, raises some Christian flags and says I am sorry Jesus. That makes Collins tear down as he watches him mock Christians especially when he remembers his wife. Collins tells him that he is trying to heal but Frank tells him that nobody wants to hear anything about God anymore or the truth of what happened. Collins loses it and handles him by the neck but the man points a gun at him and tells him that he will put a hole in his heart. He tells him that he should not threaten him unless he wants to die. He tells him to back out and wait for his great tribulation and he lets him go. He walks into his house in desperation and weariness. We then see Professor Wiseman in the university with Michelle. The professor is telling Michelle that they are trying to wipe away Christianity from the map and they have succeeded. Michelle tells him that they are not a political organization on the campus, they are just evangelizing to the students. The professor tells her that he doesn't care because they are going to shut them down. Michelle tells him that she is not there to argue with him, she is there to inform him that the paper he found against them is preventing them from evangelizing anywhere. The professor tells her that he doesn't care if people want to eat other humans, let them eat other humans. That pisses off Michelle and she stops walking with him and tells him that God cares but the professor continues walking while Michelle looks at him. In the present day, the professor is still stranded on the island and he was perusing a book titled The Last Judgment and he says that only morons believe in God. He then sees a bag coming to the shore and on opening, he finds his cell phone and starts making calls. He is asking for Jenny and he is told that she committed suicide two days ago. He starts asking for other of his friends and he is told that everyone is gone and the school has been shut down. The lady excuses herself because she has millions of calls to answer. The professor is confused. He then calls 911 and tells them that he had called earlier and requested for a rescue team but he has not seen anybody. He says that he is the sole survivor of Flight 345 was heading to Los Angeles from Oakland and he is on an island somewhere. They locate where he is and he is told to hold on and keep his phone on because they are sending rescue team. The professor is quite happy and he cannot even express his joy to the man on the phone. He is told that over 700 planes crashed and he is the only survivor that called. The professor asks him how things are back home and he tells him that he doesn't want to know because banks are all shut down, no Lakers playing, no food, riots everywhere, and everything is chaotic. The professor tells him to find where he is located because he is going out of his mind all alone on that island. While he is celebrating that he has been found, he is told to get off the island immediately because it is a very dangerous island. 
The professor starts asking why is the island dangerous and he is told that because of the tribe that are cannibals and the receiver ends the call. As the professor is angry asking what tribe he looks at his back and sees tribal men staring at him. The only thing he can do is run for his life screaming but of course, he is not a match to the tribal men who run at him with spears. He runs and falls to the ground and they use their spears to kill him while screaming. On the other side, Maria has arrived at the river and he is asking a blind man whether the boat on the river is his own and he says yes. She asks whether he can take him and he tells him that he is blind but his helper is deaf but he is his ears while he is his eyes. He recognizes Maria as one of the people trying to escape and he tells her to be calm. She tells him that she brought some little money but the man tells her that she should not worry about that. They sail through the river and Maria asks him whether he knows what is happening and the man tells him that the rapture has happened. Maria asks him what he knows and the man tells her that it is all in the Bible and if he is interpreting it correctly, there will be wars on the planet, a very massive war, people will be rioting everywhere, and only one person a save everyone from all that, the Antichrist who is in Europe. He continues and says that the seven years will be very terrible but she can be saved if she wants. Maria says that she cannot be saved and the man asks her why but before she can answer we are taken back to the rapture where Maria's mother was begging her to meet her father but she was willing and she just wanted to go and never return. Her mom tells her that her father has two days left to live but Maria says that it doesn't make any difference because she doesn't want to see him. Her mom tells her that the Bible says that if you don't forgive, even God will not forgive you. She tells her mom that her Bible is completely stupid. She gives her a Bible which she collects but says that she is not going to read it. At the river, the man tells him that God forgives and they are escaping to the mountains with others. He asks her to come with them but Maria says she can't while she is crying. She says that she wants to go back to where her mom was before she went to heaven with a million others. The man tells him that it is not too late, he can still walk with Jesus Christ and he requests her to come with them. She requests to be dropped and she is saying that she has some money to give them but the money tells her to keep her money. She tells him that he is so kind and before she leaves the boat she makes a confession to the Padre. She tells him that she understands what he is telling her about Jesus and about his forgiveness but she is full of sin and everything she used to do had no meaning. She regrets that she never surrendered to Jesus Christ earlier. Padre tells her that that was the regret of most people including him who was too blind to live a life that was far away from Jesus Christ and he is now reaping the consequences. He asks her once again why she can't stay and tells her that she will not survive in Argentina. Maria says she knows and she leaves the boat and tells him thank you. Masashi has the evidence that it was the rapture and he is planning on publishing it the following day. The lady asks him to give her the flash drive that contains the article which he does. He tells her that he did it and he can finally die peacefully. The lady who is a betrayer tells him that he knows nothing and she takes her cigar and starts smoking. Immediately, the assassin who has been looking for Masashi comes and the lady gives him the flash in exchange for a bundle of money. Masashi watches all that in disbelief and he asks what was that all about and they tell him that it is all about the money. Of course, Masashi feels betrayed and the lady goes away while the man is left with Masashi. He tells Masashi that the world is religious yet it is run by atheists. He says that they also believed in God but still, they controlled everything. They used to give the world what it lusted for when they controlled movies, TV shows, newspapers, and magazines because those who control the media control the world. He tells Masashi that the world has been on a decline for the last three decades characterized by violence, celebrities, and politics. He says that they love anything that is anti-God and curse God to his face every single day yet everyone knows that God exists. He tells him that yes, it was the rapture and he was right but what difference will it make because no one cares. He tells Masashi that the end has now come for everyone but does he know where he is going in the next life? He says that he knows where he is going because he is going to hell and he laughs sarcastically as he repeats that he is going to hell as he blows some cigar smoke to Masashi. He tells him that he is aware that he is dying soon hence he is allowing him to live and bids him goodbye while kicking his head and leaving him lying on the floor. 
Beautifully, Masashi shows us the real flyish that contains the information about the rapture. Masashi is in his house watching the news and is reported that there is an emergency world summit where the leaders of the Security Council voted to elect Jean Francois as the head of the newly formed World Industry Power Union, the WIPC. The reporter continues and says that they have some breaking news story of a reporter from the Japan Sun Times who says that he has conclusive proof of the rapture and his story has been published in the morning edition. The reporter repeats the news again to lay some emphasis on Masashi's work. On hearing that, Masashi kneels down and starts praying. He tells God that he doesn't know how to pray but he knows that he is real and he is God. He came down and saved us all, what a wonderful God he is. Masashi affirms that he loves the Lord. He thanks Jesus Christ and says that he now knows. He starts coughing and he falls on his couch and dies. Collins goes to the airport too and has a pluck card where he needs one airline ticket to anywhere. It seems no one cares about him and he walks away frustrated. The lady Collins was reading the Bible to call at him at the airport and she now believes that the rapture happened. He tells Collins that he is leaving the city and she is not sure that she will ever see him again. The lady asks him why God did not warn them and Collins tells her that he did only that they did not listen. The lady tells him that he said that all Christians are fake but Collins says that some are real. Collins remembers him telling his wife that he will take his chances and if the rapture is true then he will believe her. Michelle tells him if he cannot live for Christ now that there is peace, what makes him believe that he can die for him after the rapture when all hell breaks loose? Collins is in the traffic lifting his pluck card of his need for a single airline ticket to anywhere. Of course, no one cares. However, one lady comes to him and gives him her ticket and says that she is a friend of Michelle whom they met during a Christmas party. Collins remembers her and she asks her whether she is sure she doesn't need the ticket she says that she doesn't need it because it was her husband's ticket who vanished. He tried telling her about Jesus but she did not listen. The lady wishes him good luck and she leaves him. However, Collins calls her back gives her back the ticket, and tells her to give it to someone else because he is going to stay. He then starts writing something else on his pluck card which reads, Jesus loves you and he lifts it up for everyone to see. And the movie ends. Dear viewer, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is time to do so because the rapture is drawing nearer. Whether you believe in God or not, Jesus is coming for his saints. You could be like Professor Wiseman who says that God does not exist but that did not prevent rapture from happening. Don't be like Collins who said that he will take his chances and wait for the rapture to happen before accepting Jesus. The time is now. The rapture is believed to be an event where true Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, are suddenly and supernaturally taken from earth to meet Jesus in the air. This is often thought to be a sudden and unexpected event, with believers being, caught up, or, snatched away. It is documented in the book of 2 Thessalonians and also in the book of Matthew where Jesus himself was talking about the wise and foolish virgins. Those who have been raptured will disappear from the earth, leaving behind anything earthly but their bodies will be transformed in a twinkle of an eye. Their clothing and personal belongings will also be left behind. Non-believers and those who were not raptured will witness the sudden disappearance of friends, family members, and others, causing confusion and turmoil. Any child on the face of the earth below the age of accountability will vanish too irrespective of their parents' religion. Following the rapture, it is believed that a period of great tribulation will commence on earth. This period is often associated with a series of catastrophic events and judgments. During the tribulation, a global leader, often referred to as the Antichrist, will emerge. This leader is thought to deceive many and establish a one-world government, leading to a time of great political and social upheaval. The tribulation period is often associated with various calamities, including natural disasters, wars, plagues, and other forms of suffering. During the tribulation, 144,000 Jewish evangelists will be sealed by God and proclaim the gospel led by the two witnesses. Believers who come to faith during the tribulation may face persecution and martyrdom for their faith. 
At the end of the tribulation period, Jesus Christ will return to earth in power and glory, accompanied by the raptured believers who will return with him and conquer the Antichrist and establish a kingdom on earth where Jesus will rule as the king for one thousand years where there will be a period of peace and righteousness. Make friends with Jesus while you are still alive.